In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The seventh Sunday of Easter is the Sunday after Ascension Day. As we hear Jesus farewell to his disciples in John's Gospel and read about his ascension to heaven in the Acts of the Apostles, we commit ourselves to deepening our understanding of what it means to say goodbye and learn how saying goodbye is part of God's plan for our lives. Heavenly Father, we praise you that you have exalted your Son, Jesus Christ, to your right hand and have crowned him with glory and honour because he suffered death for us all. We rejoice in him, our great High Priest, who has entered once for all into the holy place and ever lives to intercede for us on our behalf. Grant that we, sanctified by the offering of his body, may draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith by the new and living way he has dedicated for us and present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Through the same, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Through the prophet Ezekiel, God promises to put a new heart and a new spirit within us. Let us prepare to receive these gifts by confessing our shortcomings and wrongdoing. When we reject the new heart and new spirit that God freely offers us, Lord have mercy. When we are cold-hearted and mean-spirited towards others, Christ have mercy. When we ignore the message that Jesus' teaching has for us, hardening our hearts so his words can't reach us, Lord, have mercy. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is still alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading for today from St. John, Jesus prays for himself, asking God to glorify him and for his disciples, asking God to protect them. He finishes with a prayer for unity, that they may be one as we are one. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, 
and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. hour has come, says St. John, I am coming to you. When I was the rector of Canton, a big part of my ministry was to the bereaved. A significant portion of my time would be spent on funerals, visiting families, arranging funeral services, and then officiating at them. There were many families with whom, over the 20 years I was in Canton, I was involved with its several funerals. Couples, parents, siblings, children, several generations. It was a very special experience. These are very sad times, of course, but some wonderful celebrations on times of long lives of faithful church people. They were all very special. In recent years, it's become the custom to play popular songs and ballads in funerals, especially at the crematorium. One of the biggest changes I've seen in 33 years of ministry was changes in funerals and the rituals surrounding them. I've lost count of how many times families would ask for the CD of Time to Say Goodbye, often with Andrea Bocelli and Sarah Brightman. Every life is full of goodbyes in varying degrees, from saying goodbye to someone who has served us in a shop, to the pain of losing someone or something that has given meaning and value to our life. It could be saying goodbye to a loved one, a pet, or a precious object, to familiar surroundings, to our youth as we grow older. Some years ago, the musician and writer Nick Cave was asked on the loss of his young son in a tragic accident. He was asked, how do we say goodbye? 
He wrote, to say goodbye is an act of appreciation for the past that we have moved beyond and a prelude to the new, the new you that will in time require its own goodbye. And as you continue to grow, further goodbyes, each a rehearsal for the final, most precious goodbye of all. In today's Gospel reading, we find Jesus saying goodbye to his disciples. It's part of the Upper Room Discourse, which spans chapters 13 to 17 of St. John's Gospel. This is an intense and intimate time that Jesus spends with his disciples, teaching about service, love, heaven, and prayer. He spells out his impending departure and prepares them for life without him. Within the Upper Room Discourse, today's passage forms part of what is known as the High Priestly Prayer. And Jesus' tone is reminiscent of a priest interceding for a congregation in their presence. There is no prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane in St. John's account. So this is Jesus' final prayer before his crucifixion. Afterwards, they will go to Gethsemane, where he will be arrested. The events of the Passion will quickly unfold. So this passage marks the transition between the upper room discourse and the passion of Jesus. It opens with a reference to these words, these words which Jesus has just spoken. Words addressed to his disciples. Ending with Jesus' astonishing assertion, take courage, I have conquered the world. Now in chapter 17, he addresses God directly as Father and prays for himself, asking God to glorify him. And then he prays for the disciples. How different is the goodbye that we find in the reading from Acts, also set for today. The resurrected Jesus' last words before he ascends to be with his Father are full of hope and the promise of the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Saying goodbye can be melancholy and sometimes the pain of separation is beyond words. We may feel as though we have been ripped both emotionally and physically from that which we love. Saying goodbye is often melancholy and sometimes the pain of separation is beyond words. We may feel as though we have been ripped both emotionally and physically from that which we love. We may feel as though the life has been drained from us. Yet, for all the heartbreak, each goodbye contains within it a new relationship with God. Jesus' closing words today are all about unity. Protect them so that they may be one as we are one. Similarly, Jesus' ascension, although it is a separation, is a reunion with the Father. The prophet Ezekiel knew the pain of separation and loss. He was one of those living in exile after Nebuchadnezzar exiled 3,000 Jews from Judah. For all the upheaval and turbulence he lived through, Ezekiel's faith was strong enough for him to be able to write inspiring words. Words often heard on this Sunday. Beautiful words speaking of God's eternal, unfaltering promise of new life and resurrection. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from, you, your, from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. On the last Sunday of the Easter season, our focus remains on resurrection and new life. As we look forward to the arrival of the Holy Spirit, blazing with fiery vitality next week at Pentecost, so we meditate in a fitting way on saying goodbye, drawing from our scripture readings a deep understanding of God's promise of life 
even in the midst of loss. Because though goodbyes can be painful, we can rejoice that those we have loved and lost have been united with their Heavenly Father and joyfully anticipate our own reunion with God. The Lord is risen, alleluia, alleluia. And now he is arisen, ascended, and glorified. So we pray, according to his promise, Jesus is with us now and interceding for us. We pray with confidence and courage. We pray for those who have painful goodbyes to say to someone they love. May they be comforted and consoled by the Holy Spirit. May their faith be strengthened by God's promise of reunion. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for those who feel that God is far from them, that they may walk into the light of God's presence with joy and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for communities and nations experiencing a fiery ordeal, that God might be in the midst of upheaval, granting wisdom and compassion. giving strength to those who lead, faith and power to his people. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for the example of your Son, who before facing death prayed with confidence and compassion. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Ein tard, ar hwnnw i tan y nefoedd, sanctaidia dy enw, dele dy daernas, gwnele dy wachus, megis yn y nef, felly ar y ddau a hefyd, da ro i ni heddiw ein bar y banyddio, a ma ddau i ni ein dyledion, fel y ma ddau yn dyna i'n dyledwyr. Ac nac ar ro i ni brofid i gaeth, aeth ei gwar i ni rhagrwg, can is aeddo tîr daernas, a gallu, ar gogoniant, an oes oes oes. Amen. So may the Father protect you and those you love. May the Son guide you throughout your life. May the Holy Spirit comfort you in times of pain and separation. And may we be one as they are one. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.